Hey hey, what is up guys, it is Arbin Hardware and in today's video we're gonna build the best budget 1080p gaming PC and hopefully, yeah, by the time you're watching this, you should also be able to buy this, but yeah, as we all are aware of, the stock for PC components is a pretty sad story right now. Anyway, in today's video we're gonna go through the whole building process of this PC from start to finish and we're then going to start up the computer and test the gaming performance in some of the most popular games. Now, as always, in case you decide to build this, all items are linked up down below. Now, spending about $660 or so will give you a PC build that is capable of running most games at 1080p high settings with, as you can see, smooth frame rate. And if we take a quick peek at the performance, it shows that we're able to run all games tested with great results. But yeah, we're gonna dive into the performance in much greater detail. Uh, in just a second right after the assembly. Anyway, inside this PC we find the name the Ryzen 3 3100 processor. This is a high clock 4 core processor that is based off of AMD's insanely popular and to architecture. And we got a pair of the CPU with 16GB of RAM, a 500GB SSD, as well as a GTX 1660 graphics card from Team Green. Everything contained inside this awesome looking case from Colink. Anyway, timestamps can be found down below. Now before we get started, be sure to drop a comment, let me know what you thought about this video, drop a like if you enjoy this content, and make sure to subscribe to never miss an upcoming episode. So as always, let's start with what's gonna be the base for today's build, that is the CPU, RAM and motherboard. Uh, speaking of the motherboard, I ended up picking this Gigabyte board that has been selling for around $60 to $70 for the past year now. Now this B450M board has all the necessary features you would need and the reason I keep using this board over and over again for my PC builds is simple, it is extremely reliable and its price to performance is really hard to beat. Now if you want to build a cheap gaming system in 2021, you want to spend most of your budget on what truly has the biggest impact on the performance, which is the GPU first and foremost. Now that we're not spending too much on the motherboard, we can spend that extra money on a better GPU. With that said, let's take a look at their processor coming in at $99. This is the Ryzen 3 3100, which is a quad-core CPU with 4 cores and 8 threads with a base clock of 3.6 and 3.9 GHz turbo. Now having a look at the gaming performance, we see that the 3100 doesn't disappoint here. This has much to do with Zen 2's low latency and high IPC. And even though the 3100 can quite beat with the more expensive picks as we can see, it is still a fantastic CPU in a cheaper system with a cheaper, uh, less expensive graphics card. Now, as we can see, our motherboard comes with the retention frame pre-installed, but since we're gonna use a cooler with springs, we're gonna need to remove the retention frame from the motherboard. Now installing the processor is quite simple, so you want to locate the golden triangle or a yellow triangle and this triangle can also be found on the motherboard socket. And you simply want to turn the CPU so that the triangles match up, open the metal alarm, drop the processor into the socket, then gently move the metal alarm all the way down until it locks in place and our CPU is installed. Now inside the CPU box also comes a heatsink which is good enough for stock settings. And the cooler installment is pretty simple. If this is the first time installing the CPU cooler, you should have some thermal grease pre-applied. And in that case, you don't need to apply some thermal paste on the CPU lid. Position the CPU cooler so that the four spring screws on the heatsink line up with the four screws on the back plate. And once aligned, carefully place the heatsink onto the CPU. Using a screwdriver, you want to turn each spring screw half a turn clockwise to ensure that the spring screw makes a connection with the back plate. Follow a diagonal pattern like this across the CPU cooler to further tightening each spring screw with a full turn. And with all four spring screws connected to the back plate, tighten them until you feel resistance, then check the CPU cooler to ensure that it's uh, properly secured to the motherboard. Lastly, connect the fan power cable to the CPU cooler to the fan uh, CPU fan header on the motherboard. 
For RAM, I'm specifically choosing the Corsair Vengeance LPX because of its high quality and compatibility with the Ryzen platform. Now, the 3200 MHz kit I'm specifically picking for today's build will give you a frame rate boost compared to any other cheaper slow clock kit as the way that the CPU and RAM work, faster clock RAM can gain a bit of performance in your favorite game. Now, our motherboard supports something called Dual Channel which has a positive effect on the overall performance. Now in order to take advantage of that, we're gonna wanna populate the gray slot, so simply pull back the toggle for the second and the fourth dim slot and plug them in just like so. So with that done, let's install our M.2 drive. And we wanna locate the M.2 slot, which we find right here, right underneath the CPU cooler. So what you want to do is you want to loosen this tiny screw, just like so, then gently slide the M.2 unit into the socket with this little notch you see here on the opposite side of the CPU cooler, just like so. Finally take the little screw again and hold it down like that and screw it down until it stops. And with that done, our actual motherboard assembly is actually complete and we can go ahead and move it into our case. And for today's build, I ended up picking the Colink Citadel Mesh RGB coming in at around $85. Now this case I know can be a bit hard for you Americans out there to find, but I'm gonna do my best here to see if I can find a retailer for this case in the US. Anyway, this case comes with not just two, but three 120mm RGB fans, a big tempo glass side panel so that you can take a peek at your beautiful system when it's up and running. And the whole front of this case is just a massive piece of mesh allowing for great airflow over your CPU and graphics card. For IO at the top we find 3 USB ports, a power button, a dedicated button that takes care of the RGB. And we also find the mic and audio port and there is room to fit a 240 radiator at the top if you want. And overall I'm super happy with this chassis. So we gotta prep the case before our motherboard assembly and the first thing we have to do is open up the side panel in order to get a hold of the inside. Next thing we gonna wanna install our IO shield which we find inside a motherboard box from Gigabyte. Now this one goes in from the back of the case with these circular audio ports located at the bottom. Now having the CPU cooler already installed, we can just grab on to the CPU fan and slide the motherboard into place. Now I prefer having the case laying down as I'm installing and securing the motherboard. Now, we're gonna use the screws that comes provided by Colink and with the motherboard installed, before we move on to power supply and graphics, now is the perfect time to install the chassis cables that takes care of the front audio and USB. Let's kick it off with USB 3 and this is what the cable looks like. The connector is located down at the bottom of the motherboard. Next in line we have this USB connector and this one goes to a connector that is located right next to the USB connector. Moving on to front audio, this cable goes to the left side corner. Lastly, we have the front panel connectors and you find this on the lower right side. Now this can be a bit tricky, but just take your time. With that done, let's go ahead and install our power supply and I chose this 550 watt unit from Corsair, although I am demonstrating on the CV650. Anyway, this is a compact and silent high quality PCU with 80 plus bronze efficiency certification coming in at just $58. For optimal temperatures, you want to make sure that you got the fan facing downwards, then gently slide the PCU into place and secure it. We're gonna do a couple of cables and wiring before installing our graphics. And first up, we got the 24 pin power for our motherboard and this one goes to a connector on the mid right side. Next up we got the EPS, 8 pin power for our CPU and this one goes all the way up to the left side corner. Now it is finally time to install our graphics and for today's build we find the GTX 1660 and this is specifically coming from Asus called Dual. Now this 1660 comes with 6GB of VRAM which is good enough for 1080p and even 1440p gaming. 
Now this GPU should also be a lot easier to find at stock MSRP, but as we know right now the market is upside down, so hopefully by the time you're watching this you should be able to find a 1660 at the MSRP, fingers crossed. In order to install a graphics card we need to remove a couple of these uh, PCE brackets and then we can plug in the graphics card and take this dual PCE cable and plug it into a graphics card just like so. What is left to do is to flip the case around back on the side panel and we have officially completed our $700 gaming PC build and if you did everything right your system should power on. So with that done let's fire up some games and find out how it performs. Alright, so on your screen now, you're looking at the performance numbers I gathered from today's build and I ended up running 15 games in total and overall I'm very very pleased with these results. But yeah, let's dive a bit deeper with some of the games tested and first up, let's have a look at Death Stranding running at 1080p high settings and as we can see this beautiful looking game is running fantastic on today's build with an average of 90 FPS uh, with 1% low at almost 80 FPS. And so if you have a 1440p monitor, you should be able to play at this resolution without any problems. Now moving on to CSGO and as we can see I opted for competitive settings here. And so I left pretty much everything at low, running at 1080p and this results in over 200 FPS in a simple random deathmatch. Moving on to Doom Eternal and this time I went for high settings and 1080p and as we can see this machine has no problems reaching 60 FPS and so 1440p should also be possible. Overwatch is next up and I'm running at 1080p high settings and this results in a very smooth frame rate. Gameplay on average is over 100 FPS at 1% low. Even Horizon Zero Dawn runs great and this is once again 1080p high settings. And again guys, all PC components can be found down below. I'm also starting up a Discord server and so if you guys wanna join up and start discussing PC builds and possible issues and everything in between, this is definitely the place to do it. I'm obviously going to hang out there as well and answer any questions you guys might have so you definitely wanna join. Now watch either of these two videos and I will see you guys in the next video.